I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, to the press who are covering this issue that has been ignored for too long. I want to thank the members of our team here at the department. We have so many folks in the back who helped put this report together. It's been an exhausting and emotional effort for them to confront this horror on a daily basis to bring this information to you. I'm deeply grateful for their work, both as a member of Secretary Holland's leadership team and as somebody who grew up in a family and a community that's been impacted by these boarding schools. <laughs> Federal Indian boarding schools have had a lasting impact on Native people and communities across America. And that impact continues to influence the lives of countless families, <laughs> from the breakup of families and tribal nations to the loss of languages and cultural practices and relatives. Excuse me. This has left lasting scars for all indigenous people. There's not a single American Indian, Alaska Native or Native Hawaiian in this country whose life hasn't been affected by these schools. We haven't begun to explain the scope of this policy era until now. Under the leadership of Secretary Holland, the department has for the first time started an investigation of the federal Indian boarding school system. This report that we're releasing to you today places the Indian boarding school system in its historical, legal, and policy context and details initial investigative findings, including an official list of federal Indian boarding schools. This report confirms that this boarding school system was part of a twin United States policy, the dispossession of Indian lands and the forced assimilation of Indian people. The report explains that the federal government pursued this policy of forced assimilation by targeting Indian children. Federal Indian boarding schools were the primary means to carry out this policy. And the report shows that all three branches of the federal government impacted this system. Multiple generations of American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian children were induced or compelled by the federal government to be brought to these schools. Given their political and legal status as Indians and Native Hawaiians, as recognized by the United States Constitution and centuries of Supreme Court precedent in congressional legislation. For this investigation, the department first engaged and consulted with tribes, Alaska Native villages, Alaska Native corporations, and Native Hawaiian communities to incorporate their concerns and views into our work. Through the Bureau of Trust Funds Administration, we identified and examined federal records to develop an official list of federal Indian boarding schools and to identify marked and unmarked burial sites. And through a formal partnership with the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition, it was instrumental in sharing information and records that contributed to this report. As of today, our work shows that from 1819 to 1969, the United States operated or supported 408 boarding schools across 37 states or then territories, including 21 schools in Alaska and seven in Hawaii. The report identifies each of those schools by name and location, some of which operated across multiple sites. While generations of Indian and native Hawaiian children entered these boarding schools, many died, often far from their homes and families. We've identified 53 marked 
were unmarked burial sites and cemeteries for Indian children across the system, with more site discoveries expected as we continue our research. The department will not make public the specific locations of burial sites associated with this system to protect against very real threats of grave robbing, vandalism, and other desecration. Our initial investigation results show that approximately 50% of federal Indian boarding schools may have received support or involvement from religious institutions or organizations, including funding, infrastructure, and personnel. The federal government at times paid religious institutions and organizations on a per capita basis for Indian children to enter the schools that these institutions and organizations operated. The investigation shows that in addition to congressional appropriations, the United States may have used monies held in tribal trust accounts, including those based on sessions of Indian lands to the United States, to fund Indian children to attend these schools. The report describes the condition that Indian and Native Hawaiian children experienced. These conditions included militarized and identity alteration methodologies on kids. Federal records also affirm that the federal Indian boarding school system discouraged or prevented the use of indigenous languages and focused on vocational training, involvement of manual labor, and Indian children. The report identifies the running bear studies, quantitative research based on now adult federal Indian boarding school attendees medical status that indicates that the boarding school system continues to impact the present day health of Indian people who participated in that study. These results verify the need for a comprehensive review and report by an independent research group to assess the current impacts that native, or excuse me, Indian boarding schools have had on American Indians, Alaska Natives, Native Hawaiians, including on their health, education, and economic status. In order to complete the object objectives of this initiative, I've made eight recommendations for the next steps of this investigation. Implementation of some of these recommendations will require the help and assistance of Congress. I want to point out that this investigation so far has been conducted with existing congressional appropriations, relying on the service of Bureau of Trust Funds Administration staff and volunteers from other department bureaus. Congress has provided $7 million to the department for advancing this investigation under fiscal year 2022 Consolidated Appropriations Act. This funding will permit us to help find answers to the pressing questions left unexamined uh, in this report. Answers in our next volume, we expect to include approximating the total number of children that attended these schools, approximating the total number of marked and unmarked burial sites, identifying names and ages and tribal affiliations of children interred at those burial sites, approximating the amount of federal support for this system, recognizing that some of our records may no longer exist. Also, uh, we will also examine and seek to identify religious institutions and organizations and other non-federal entities that ever received federal funding in support of this boarding school system. While this report spotlights a solemn period in US history, it lays the groundwork for future focused actions outlined in our recommendations. To begin the process of healing from the harm and the violence caused by Indian assimilation policy, the Department of the Interior should affirm an explicit and express policy of cultural revitalization, supporting the work of tribes, Alaska Native villages, and Native Hawaiian communities to revitalize their languages, cultural practices, and traditional food systems, and to protect and strengthen intra-tribal relations. We're engaging and supporting other federal agencies to assist this initiative, including those with control of any relevant records or that provide health care to American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians, including for the uh, provision of mental health services to students attending our Bureau of Indian Education operated and funded schools.
Every worthwhile journey begins with its first step. This report is not an end of that journey, it's a beginning. It marks the, one of the first steps on the road to help begin a healing process in this country. For Indian country and the Native Hawaiian community, the entire United States, and every person in every tribal community from the Alaskan tundra to the Florida Everglades and everywhere in between. Miigwech, thank you all for being here. Thank you for bearing with us. And I want to turn this over to my friend, Deb Parker from the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition. Thank you.